On tonight's CTV News, Littleton residents are planning their own arts precinct, and while there may be delays, our city's extensive roadworks are at least viewed as progress. This is CTV News. I'm Grant Mangan. It's one of the fastest growing places in New Zealand with many Christchurch residents relocating to the Waimakariri district following the earthquakes. Now the release of a new subdivision is meeting the demand for more properties. It could be the biggest area in the Waimakariri district. By the time this new development is built, the gateway to Christchurch will house almost the same amount of residents than the neighbouring town in Rangiora. Ravenswood development plans to be built opposite Pegasus Township and it's being built with a purpose, with this large commercial space not yet seen in the area. Here we plan to have supermarket, petrol station, uh, farmers market and then going down through here this is that more industrial type commercial area, this is high density and then going back through the whole subdivision you'll see these 1500 uh, residential sections. The new area will house over 1,500 sections and the developers are hopeful it will be the most affordable subdivision in Canterbury. We believe this will be the most affordable subdivision in Christchurch. As well as having a strong sense of community. One of the things we've learnt about the um, earthquakes in Christchurch is that people want to know their neighbours. So we're putting a lot of amenity in here, whether it be pools, uh, walkways, bike parks, uh, basketball courts, etc. Um, so people can have a, a sense of home. North Canterbury is one of the fastest growing populations in New Zealand. Um, hence the reason why we believe there's strong demand um, and a need for a subdivision of this size. Following the earthquakes, the Waimakariri district seen building consents leap from 488 in 2011 up to 1,200 last year. Uh, we had a, a big uh, upturn in the last couple of years, so we're running at about 200% uh, above our historic average. So that's a big challenge to make sure that we process consents in a timely fashion and that we also make sure we've got good planning and delivery of our infrastructure. And new subdivisions such as Ravenswood are helping ease the pressure off the housing market. Quite a lot of that is replacing housing stock that was lost through the red zoning and the effects of the earthquakes and the second is responding to uh, the uh, accommodation need from elsewhere in Greater Christchurch. A new subdivision was also opened in Kaiapo yesterday, a sign the area is making steps towards meeting the demand of the growing population. Emma Cropper, CTV News. Growth in the Waimakariri district means there are more commuters on the roads. Emma Cropper spoke with the New Zealand Transport Agency about their plans to ease congestion. Getting rid of 300 vehicles, it's all it will take to ease traffic congestion. Christchurch's northern corridor is exceeding its capacity, leaving commuters stuck in gridlock. And what it means is you get quite a long travel time through tram road in particular to Empire Road. So what might take you between two and four minutes normally is taking you ten minutes or more, so um, that's unacceptable. The New Zealand Transport Agency Task Force is in charge of solving the traffic issues finding that during rush hour the capacity of the corridor is being exceeded by 300 vehicles. Post earthquake there's been a lot more growth of housing out in the Rangiora sort of Kaipoi area and uh, since 2006 there's 21% more vehicles coming in from that northern sector than there were before. The NZTA has a plan in place to help ease congestion on the roads of national significance within the next six years. But they're acting now to help with the growing problem including extending merging lanes at Tram Road, changing light signals on Empire Road and encouraging different start times for workers. And we've encouraged people to look at starting a little bit later or a little bit earlier and try and avoid that sort of 6.30 to 7.15 sort of peak. And for whatever, those three things have been the only changes in the last month and we had advised anecdotally that things are getting better. A rail system is being investigated along with other options to help ease the traffic congestion for commuters travelling between the Waimakariri district and Christchurch. We'll be bringing down an expert from Auckland in terms of how you manage motorways and including the possibility of variable message speed signs and um, signals so that um, vehicles coming on the on-ramps are actually monitored by signals so that you're maximising flow on the motorway. More commuters has been an effect from the earthquake after an influx of residents moving into the Waimakariri district. Emma Cropper, CTV News. 
High school students making the leap from school to the workplace are going to receive a helping hand from WorkChoice. Christchurch students will be the first in New Zealand to be part of a job finding trial. The unique life after school project helps students become street savvy before entering the job market, a way of giving them an edge when applying for jobs straight out of school. The project is being rolled out by WorkChoice, a trust established in 1994 to bridge the gap from education to employment. In the past decade, WorkChoice has helped over 150,000 senior high school students. A global survey found 50% of youth believe education hasn't prepared them for the working world. WorkChoice Chief Executive Amanda Wheeler believes the unique approach to workplace education will help boost Canterbury's youth employment. The Life After School project helps young people who are unprepared for the workforce gain knowledge about how to market themselves and understand the recruitment process. The pilot program will be launched at Lincoln University at the start of June. The Life After School scheme is set to be trialled in Christchurch before being rolled out around the rest of the country. Before we get to our daily roading update later in the show, Marcus Gibbs has good news for motorists frustrated by the delays in the central city. After years of delays caused by earthquake repairs, work in the central city will be dropping off from July. A new skirt survey is showing road users are adapting to the roadworks. According to the survey, they see them as a sign of progress for the city. The Christchurch Community Perception Survey, commissioned by Skirt, asked 400 Christchurch people last month about their perceptions of the rebuild of the city's horizontal infrastructure. The survey found people are being impacted by the work, but they appreciate there is a bigger picture. Skirt's rebuilding the city's earthquake damaged roads, freshwater, wastewater and stormwater networks. To date, 57% of Skirt work in central Christchurch is complete. The most intensive work affecting road users is scheduled to drop off from July, meaning less delays and detours. By the end of the year, 90% of Skirt's work in the central city should be finished. In the Skirt survey, 92% of respondents agreed. Roadworks are all part of the progress. 93% agree their journeys were taking longer due to the roadworks, while 87% say they allow extra time for journeys because of possible changes to the work. They must have been listening to CTV's traffic update for advice on that matter. Christchurch City Council Acting Chief Executive Jane Parfitt says the team understands the frustration of motorists. However, their research shows 80% of respondents appreciating the work. Arana Wildlife Park staff are devastated by the death of a cheetah that was sent to Wellington Zoo yesterday. Happier days, five-year-old Shamari before his trip north to Wellington Zoo. Sadly, he did not survive his flight, so staff found him unconscious upon arrival. Vets worked through the night trying to save him. The entire team is devastated by the sad loss of Shamari. Shamari has been hand-raised from a, a few hours old and um, you know he was worked with around the clock to save him as a little cub and um, yeah he's been at the zoo for five years and is a much loved animal. An investigation has been launched into the cause of Shamari's death. Arana staff say he was fit to travel before the plane left and was sedated for the flight. A reaction to the sedative has not been ruled out. Uh, the post-mortem and the, the test that will be carried out of things in his system, we do hope that um, that gives us answers, but um, yes, that, that is a theory and a possibility. In its 20 years of running a cheetah breeding program, this is the only time something like this has happened to a runner wildlife park. Being the largest cheetah holder and breeder in Australasia, um, we have sent a lot of cheetah a lot of places. We've imported cheetah from the other side of the world. Um, this is just out of the box. Shamari flew to Wellington with his brother Kango as part of the Cheetah Ambassador Program. Kango will now have to adjust to his new home alone. He'll be very much missing his, his brother um, because they're very close and completely bonded. Headkeeper of Exotics Rob Clifford is keeping Kango company while he adjusts to Wellington Zoo. An autopsy will confirm the cause of Shamari's death. Staff are expecting it to take up to three days. Marcus Gibbs, CTV News. Coming up, Littleton is going to get its own arts precinct.
Be watching CTV News first at five and you could win up to $5,000 every week with CTV's cash giveaways. For more information, visit our website and be watching CTV News first at five. Come in and meet the locals at the Bush Inn Centre. Whether it's to grab a coffee on the go or to catch up with a friend over lunch or dinner, the Bush Inn Centre is the perfect place. With our unique range of shops, you'll find everything you're looking for and more. Our friendly locals are always happy to help. We have plenty of parking at the Bush Inn Centre, making your shopping experience just a little bit easier. So come in, meet the locals and shop Bush Inn. You'll find us on the corner of Rickerton and Waimari Roads. Our friends and family celebrate and live their lives in all sorts of ways. So it's always hard and sad with the passing of a loved one. We at Palmer Funerals know and understand this, and we believe that their life should still be celebrated even when they have gone. With our newly built chapel, we can help tailor make a funeral which is unique and personal to you and help celebrate their life while making your difficult time easier. Palmer Funeral Services, tailor made funerals. Hi, I'm Steve and welcome to Carpet Kingdom. At Carpet Kingdom we stock a massive range of carpets and we're also the largest vinyl stockers in the South Island. And not only do we have an excellent range in store, but you can purchase our stock online. We offer free measuring quotes, we have our own installation team, we ship nationwide, so come on down and see us at Carpet Kingdom. 312 Wilson's Road in Waltham, just off Bryham Street, or visit us online at carpetkingdom.co.nz. Come dine with Country Catering at the Kaipoi Golf Club Cafe. Enjoy our range of delicious $10 lunches, daily specials and other homemade goodies. Open to the public seven days inside the Kaipoi Golf Club. North end of William Street, Kaipoi. We look forward to seeing you soon. The Home Show sale is on. Hi, Mike from Four Seasons. We have the largest range of gas and wood burners on display. All wood burners and gas fires are heavily reduced. Save up to $1,300 on fire and flu packages. The Home Show sale at Four Seasons Home and Leisure, Tower Junction Mega Centre. Be immersed in the unique cultural highlights Germany has to offer every Tuesday night with Discover Germany. Tuesday at 7pm, right here on CTV. Littleton residents are proposing to build an outdoor amphitheatre as their new arts precinct. Littleton residents and local shop owners are calling for more support for an outdoor amphitheatre proposal. Brian Rick, amphitheatre organiser and owner of Littleton's Harbour Co-op, says what started as a dream for an outdoor theatre has become a floor plan to a proposed outdoor location space. Local businesses and engineers have partnered with the group Project Littleton, hoping to turn this business owner's dream into a reality. Well, the, the first thing is to really draw people back to Littleton and give something really good back to the community. So uh, a, a way to draw people in for, for the summers, but also as a real community space for use. Uh, we see a, a multi-use program over the summer months uh, with some major events and festivals that's going to just bring vibrancy to the town. After the earthquakes, Littleton Tunnel was badly damaged, literally cutting the seaside suburb off from the rest of Christchurch for a number of days. Amphitheatre organiser Brian Rick says the project will help bring people back to Littleton and bring a once broken community back together. We, we need some good good news. Uh, you know, we've been hit pretty hard by the quakes, and then uh, recent floods have been, uh, you know, taking their toll. And just just to have things coming back, and just yeah, gives people some uh, something to be excited and happy about. The previously earthquake damaged land will need to be raised and levelled out to be ready for building to begin. Planning stages are already underway, but the aim for this vacant space is to see some action of the arts in time for summer. We're getting close as far as the planning stages. Obviously there's a lot of funding to be secured uh, and a, a lot of planning to be done, but pretty optimistic that we'll be ready for the summer. So uh, I'd like to see things up and up and going uh, in November. Uh, so we'll you know, hopefully be in the next couple of months uh, starting to, to really start working on the site. Littleton is a suburb which prides itself on community. The local Saturday market is a huge attraction, bringing in Christchurch residents to buy the local produce. The grassy space in the proposed amphitheatre, Brian Rick says, will be the perfect place to extend the marketplace. It's about trying to find ways for the site to have a lot to offer the Littleton community. 
Well, I think there's something in it for everyone. I like to think so. Uh, you know, we're looking at a very multi-use program uh, where we've got music, theater, dance, uh, film, uh, but also as a community space, so as a place to, to, to gather, to, to just enjoy uh, a, a nice open space in the, in the township. Brian Rick says the vacant lot will be able to be transformed into a temporary meeting space for the community. The consenting process will continue and in the meantime, he'll be looking to raise more support from the community. Joel Batista, CTV News. Christchurch Primary School children are celebrating Samoan Language Week by learning about the cultures of Pacifica. Taofi mai i Amasina. Hold fast to your treasures. The theme for Samoan Language Week. Samoan is the third most spoken language in New Zealand and over 144,000 people identify themselves as Samoans. The Pacific Islanders Affairs Minister, Pasete Sam Lotulinga, says Samoan Language Week allows Pacific children the chance to share their culture with their classmates and teachers. For every day of Samoan Language Week, Eddington School organised different activities for the children to get involved. Today's was trying the traditional foods. Sano Taisi, Eddington School Pacific Liaison, says this is the first time the school has actively celebrated Samoan Language Week. Two years ago our school didn't have anything to do, like not really, not much to do with Pacific Island stuff and yeah we're getting somewhere so yeah, and I'm so proud that I've been part of it. 12% of Eddington School are Pacific Island students, predominantly made up of Samoan and Tongan children. Eddington School Principal Trudy Heath says the students were keen to try the Samoan food fascinated by the differences in the culture. Trudy Heath says cultural diversity is an important part of New Zealand society, something she encourages at Eddington. Oh, I think it just it makes them risk takers because they often look at things and are not prepared to try. I'm a bit like that, so I mean, it's a big risk for me. Um, and I think it helps them seeing us do it and just trying out and acknowledging and helping them, the, our Samoan students, celebrate their culture. Trudy Heath says it's incorporating culture and education. It's important for the students not only to learn but connect into the wider community. It's absolutely imperative, especially for our Samoan students, because we need to help them keep their culture and their language alive. It is a very, very much a part of their entire life, so we try to keep it alive at school by have, allowing the children to work in their first language and encouraging it and celebrating all of that. As a Samoan, Sano Taisi says sharing the Samoan culture with New Zealanders is really important. Taisi says it gives the Pacifica children the opportunity to be proud of their heritage and culture. I just hope that they enjoy it and just, you know, it's something from our culture, it's just something that they've never had before and I hope, yeah, it's just nice sharing our culture with them as well. Festivities continue around the country, celebrating the language that many New Zealanders call their own. It's really important, you know, I don't know, just, you just it's just something that you just have to, like, always remember and, like, be proud of, like, wherever you go and just, yeah. Holding fast to the language, a cultural treasure. Tofu Ma Ia Messina, Joel Batista, CTV News. Still to come, the business, traffic and weather updates. This could be nothing. Europe in concert. A new fantastic international artist performing every week. Saturday evening at 7pm, right here on CTV. Blackwalls has a proud history presenting leading vehicle brands, extensive backup and service for a total one-stop driving experience. Holden, Mazda and HSV new and used vehicle sales, servicing, parts, paint and panel, Isuzu truck sales and service, all together in one convenient location. More selection, more value, more quality and more reasons to make Blackwalls your number one choice. Visit Blackwalls today, call the Waterloo Racecourse Road, Sockburn or online at blackwalls.co.nz. Welcome to Caltex Redwood. We're a family-owned business proudly supporting our local community. We're open 24-7 for fuel and shop goods and we have an amazing team of people ready to help you. Save at least six cents per litre using AA Smart Fuel Cards. We also offer great value on our LPG bottle fills. We have a full workshop and Bridgestone tyre centre. Our mechanics and tyre technicians will get your car sorted. Caltex Redwood. We're just down from St Bede's on Main North Road. Caltex Redwood. What drives you? Avoid the monkeys when it comes to relocating. 
Trust A1 Movers, a family business since 1993 that guarantees a professional job every time. We carefully handle and wrap your valued items, ensuring they have a safe journey. Secure storage and insurance options are also available. A1 Movers, the careful, caring, moving company. Oi! Get rid of that damaging and unsightly moss, mould and lichen from your path, drive or roof with Mossbuster. Mossbuster is a no-bleach, non-abrasive, biodegradable solution that has over 35 years of proven results. Mossbuster costs less than half the price of other well-known products and can be yours for less than a dollar a litre. You just spray it on and let Mother Nature do the rest. Check out our website to find the best solution to your moss, mould and grime problem. Order online or call us now on 0800 88 1000. Join us tonight at 6 for DW World News. Informative, lively, international news, breaking stories and global developments. DW News, weekdays at 6pm, right here on CTV. Here's Warren Head with this week's business news. I'm Warren Head from headliner.co.nz. The big picture news this week was the cutting in the forecast milk payout price uh, and in fact this year delivering a lower price than anticipated of $8.40. What does that really mean? Should we be worried about it at home? Well possibly not because what it does, it takes the sting out of uh, cost to some extent. Um, the reduction is $395 million out of incomes out on the farm, but that's just a little bit of cream off the top of what's been a fantastic season, hasn't it, for the farmers. You know, the average farm profitability this year per hectare will be $3,500, according to the ANZ Bank, $3,500. Now, usual average season, it's probably about $2,000 a hectare, which is where it's going to get to next year when the price is expected to be cut to $7 a kg of milk solids. So anyway, the farmers will still do, be doing very well. That's well above the average for the last seven years. And the money has been going back to the bank, pay off debt. And we won't see too much of an effect flowing through to shops in the rural towns around Canterbury, I don't think. So in the other side of the equation, it means costs come out of the ingredients size side of things. So no push from cost inflation on that side. So not a bad outcome overall. I know they'll hurt a little bit, uh, but they've had a pretty good year, haven't they? Now, who's having a good year? A lot of results coming through from the companies this week indicate they're actually doing a bit better than anybody expected. But at the start of the year, you might have thought that a good result would be up about 9 or 10%. We've had some absolute crackers. Uh, Main Freight in particular came out with a 36% increase, a really fantastic business this. And in the context of Christchurch, they are building a new centre on the edge of the city. Latest on that is it looks likely to be around about May 2015 before they'll be moving in there. But that's a biggie, uh, really great New Zealand company coming through there. On the local front to NPT, we used to call it National Property Trust a few years ago, but it's now NPT Limited. They own Eastgates, uh, Eastgate uh, Shopping Centre. And the developments that are really occurring there of some interest is how they are now turning Eastgate into more of a community hub. Now, I've always wondered why you didn't have the doctor and the at the local um, shopping centre. It would have been a lot more convenient for a lot of us instead of driving all over town to find them. And Eastgate is going to do something like that. They're moving the Linwood Avenue Medical Centre in there. They've already got the local library and service centre located there on the first floor. And when they move the medical centre in, it will establish Eastgate as a community hub for that, that area. So something to look out for there. And finally, the investment company, Kingfish, run by Carmel Fisher, one of the country's very best fund managers, and I know many of you at home will be investors in some of her retirement funds. She's had a pretty good year with uh, the company that she chairs, or she runs, the investment company Kingfish. Good result coming through there. And you know, that company's returned 18.9% for the past year. So good on her. I mean, it's good to see her performing well because we all um, have a vested interest in how our retirement funds are going. I'm Warren Head for headliner.co.nz. If you're driving around the central city, CTV's traffic update will assist you navigating the repairs taking place.
Hello travellers, to help you plan your journey around the central city, here's a few tips on how to get around the centre. Manchester streets restricted to southbound traffic only between Cambridge and Armagh streets. If you're travelling northbound, you'll be detoured right onto Armagh Street, then up Madras and down Kilmore Street before you're shepherded back onto Manchester Street. Chum Street remains closed between Colombo and High Street as the demolition nears completion. To keep up to date on what's happening with the Central City Roads, stay tuned, keep watching CTV News first at 5, and in the meantime, visit the Transport for Christchurch website. And finally tonight, your regional weather. Kia ora everybody, a warmer day around Canterbury, however a warm north westerly airflow is giving way to colder south westerlies this afternoon as a cold front moves over Canterbury. Let's take a look at today's temperatures. Ashburton, 18 degrees for your Thursday. Medford had 19 degrees. Rakaia, 18 degrees for you. Darthfield had 19 degrees today. Leeston and Rolleston had 19 degrees and Lincoln also on 19 degrees. Christchurch, a warm day for you with 20 degrees and the same over in Akaroa with a warm 20 degrees today. Out in North Canterbury, Kaipui, Rangiora and Amberley also all on 20 degrees for Thursday. Taking a look inland now, Colverton and Hamnes Springs, you both were on 19 degrees and 19 degrees for Cheviot. And travelling further up along the east coast to Kaikoura, a warm day with 21 degrees. Timaru, mostly fine and sunny tomorrow with frosts morning and night and slight south westerly winds. Tonight's low a chilly minus 2 and tomorrow's high 10 degrees. A fine but cold Friday in store for Ashburton with clear skies and light winds. Tonight's low, same for you with minus two and tomorrow's high, ten. Christchurch, fine but very cold in the city as well, with plenty of sunshine and light southwesterlies. However, it will be frosty tomorrow night. Tonight's home night low, zero, and tomorrow's high will be 11 degrees. Mostly fine in Kaikoura, with plenty of sun tomorrow, although we will have cold temperatures and light southwesterly winds. Tonight's low is at 2 degrees, tomorrow's high 10 degrees. A fine day ahead for the rest of Canterbury, but those temperatures will be fairly low. Tamuka and Geraldine can expect a high of 11 degrees. Medfin, you'll have 10 degrees and 11 expected for a higher. Darfield, you can expect 10 degrees tomorrow and Leeston, 10 degrees for you. Rolleston and Lincoln, 10 degrees for you as well, and Akaroa, 10 degrees expected for you. And out in North Canterbury, Kaipui and Rangiora, 11 degrees is set for your Friday. Amberley also have 11 expected for you. And Colverton, Hamner Springs and Cheviot, a fine day ahead with just 11 degrees. Looking ahead for Canterbury, well it's mostly fine and sunny through to next Wednesday, however you will have cool daytime temperatures with light north easterly winds. And that's your weather update for Thursday. Enjoy the rest of your evening. That's CTV News, I'm Grant Mangan, good night. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.